Quentin Kemmer wakes up to the intrusive sound of the alarm clock and begins his daily morning routine. He lives in a poor neighborhood, so he's already accustomed to the questionable neighborhood residents. There's the drunken old man Willie yelling under his window today, but the guy greets him with a smile. Quentin is having breakfast with his dog Thor and reading the latest newspaper, which reports on a dangerous criminal with seven victims to his name. The guy wishes he could fight evil on his own, but for now he can only get a job as a security guard. On leaving the apartment, he meets a new neighbor on the stairwell, a pretty girl named Stephanie. She is studying to be a nurse and has moved to the neighborhood to be closer to work. Quentin and Stephanie go out on the street, where they are stopped by local hooligans. They start messing with the girl and Quentin tries to calm them down. The punks get even bolder, threatening the shy and physically weak security guard with violence. Stephanie steps in for her neighbor, much to the guy's embarrassment. Before going to work, Quentin stops by the comic book and toy store where his buddy Han works. Surrounded by superheroes, the guy feels more confident. A collectible Spider-Man action figure is delivered to the store, which immediately gets Quentin excited. Han promises to hold on to the pricey action figure for his friend until he can save up enough money. He also gives him a new issue of the Spider-Man comic book, which explains the entire backstory of the superhero. With his mood now elevated, Quentin arrives at work in the biochemistry lab. He and his older partner, nicknamed Papa Nick, start walking around the building. Nick wonders if the young man has asked his cute neighbor out on a date. Quentin is hesitant to make the first move and thinks that a loser like him can't get a pretty girl like Stephanie to like him. His partner assures Quentin that he is a decent guy and says he is very proud of him. They peek through the window of one of the lab areas where scientists are experimenting on spiders. The two witness the administration of a red-colored injection to one of the test subjects. Quentin is interested in the fate of the spider, but one of the scientists closes the blinds to the curious onlookers. Evening arrives and the guard shift comes to an end. Quentin is reading a new comic book, much to Nick's disapproval. The young man explains to his older partner that comic books help him fantasize and have colorful dreams. He talks with admiration about the superhero spider, who helps people and takes down villains. The hero is an inspiration to Quentin and he fantasizes about being like him. Quentin goes off on his last patrol, while his partner stays behind to watch what's going on through the security cameras. Suddenly he notices two unknown men attacking a scientist and forcibly dragging her into a lab. The guard presses the alarm button, but it does not go off. Armed with a pepper spray, Nick rushes to the rescue himself. Meanwhile, Quentin returns to the security office and observes on the CCTV footage an armed criminal taking his partner hostage. He rushes to the lab, but is intercepted by two older and more experienced cops who are also on duty in the building. The guards begin to storm in, but Quentin halts one of the cops. A gunfight breaks out in the room. When the sound of gunfire fades, Quentin and Officer Williams go inside. The office is completely wrecked and none of the participants have managed to survive the fight. Quentin rushes up to Nick and his partner passes away right in his arms. The young man is saddened and struggles to come to his senses after the passing away of his older partner. He is confronted by Officer Williams, outraged that Nick's helplessness has resulted in his partner's loss. Quentin mutually accuses Guy's partner of the incident, for which Officer Williams starts fighting with him. Their confrontation is interrupted by Detective Jack Grillo, who arrives at the crime scene. He dismisses the aggressive cop and tells him to calm down. The lab worker reports to the detective that there are no valuables in the building and the purpose of the attack remains unknown. It turns out that the biochemistry lab is doing research into the resistance to weapons of mass destruction, and this may prove to be a clue. For Quentin, the situation plays out in a terrible way. Management fires him for failing to perform his duties. Reporters show up on the scene. One of them steps on the spider that escaped from the lab, but it remains unharmed. The journalists, hungry for headlines, cast Quentin as the main culprit in the incident. Due to the stress he's been through, the guy starts having voice hallucinations that call him to the ruined lab. He goes to the room where the spider was being experimented on, walks up to the machine injecting the spider, and puts his hand under the syringe. An unknown red-colored substance penetrates his DNA and for a while loses consciousness. The following day, Stephanie notices that the alarm clock in her roommate's apartment is still ringing. This worries the girl a little, since they usually go to work at the same time. Meanwhile, Quentin's apartment is a mess. His things are scattered on the floor, and he himself sleeps naked in a bathtub filled with ice. Late at night, Stephanie returns from work and finds the newspaper with an article about Quentin on her doorstep. Worried about the guy's well-being, she decides to check on him. The door to her neighbor's apartment is unlocked and she goes inside. She finds the situation inside strange. The refrigerator is wide open and the alarm clock has been ringing since early morning. Thor points to the bathroom door and Stephanie follows the dog. 
The girl is horrified to find traces of red liquid on the tub. Quentin suddenly appears from behind the door, scaring the girl even more. The young man tells her his version of what happened. He is still not feeling well, so Stephanie provides him with medical attention. While treating the man's wounds, the nurse notices a puncture mark on his arm. She freaks out, thinking he's suffering from drug withdrawal. But Quentin assures her that he was just pissed and accidentally pricked himself with something in the lab. Stephanie calms down and offers her neighbor condolences for the loss of his partner. Quentin admits that he is tired of being a defenseless do-gooder and really wants to change. Before she heads off to her place, Stephanie hints to her neighbor that she likes nice guys like him. Quentin smiles fondly, but soon a new pain attack overwhelms him. Quentin wakes up late in the morning feeling very hungry. He retrieves all the meat he has in the refrigerator and avidly consumes the cooked food afterwards. Later that evening, he dresses up all in black and stares sadly at a photo of him and his partner together before leaving for the bar where the cops like to hang out. There, he keeps an eye on Officer Williams, who is having a good time with some blonde girl. The bartender notices an unusual tattoo on Quentin's arm and begins to talk passionately about his tattoos. The guy is surprised to find black lines resembling spider webs on the tattoo. He asks the bartender if Officer Williams is planning to leave the bar with the lady. The man tells the young man not to get involved with the policeman because of his bad temper. The bartender also tells him that the blonde has a husband and it's Jack Grillo. The rumor is that the detective is neither respected by his wife nor his fellow cops, who think he's a wuss. Six months ago, a criminal took out Grillo's partner, and he couldn't fire back at him. Quentin is familiar with that feeling more than any other. Jack Grillo himself walks into the bar. He approaches William's table and asks his wife to go home. The husband and lover get into a verbal altercation in which they try to get at each other over their partners passing away. The squabble ends with the detective forcibly removing his wife from the bar. Williams immediately hooks up with another girl, and Quentin remains hesitant to retaliate against the policeman for the assault and walks out of the bar. However, he soon gets a chance to put his new abilities to the test. Stephanie returns home from work and notices someone following her. Just as she is about to enter her apartment, an unknown villain grabs her and knocks her to the floor. The girl desperately tries to resist, but the villain is much stronger than she is. At the doorway, Quentin is distracted by a homeless man, Willie, who asks to borrow a buck to buy a car. Suddenly he senses with his whole body that something bad is going on inside the house. He finds his neighbor's keys on the floor of the entryway and rushes to her aid. Meanwhile, the villain hits Stephanie and starts to take her clothes off. Quentin stops him from carrying out his plan and, with a single move, throws the criminal a few meters away and breaks the door of the next apartment with his body. Stephanie gradually begins to recover. Her savior prefers to remain an unknown superhero, so he immediately runs down the fire escape. Quentin notices that the tattoo on his arm is getting even bigger. The police, led by Detective Jack Grill, arrive on the scene. They establish that the villain's neck has snapped like a twig from the powerful throw. Grillo interrogates Stephanie about what happened, but the girl does not remember the face of her savior. Quentin shows up at the door of her apartment and the girl rushes into his arms. In tears she tells the young man what happened and describes her rescuer as a true hero. Returning to his house, Quentin finally lets his emotions run wild. He is thrilled with his immense new power. His dream has come true, he has become like his favorite superhero. The tired Jack Grillo returns home and tells his wife about the new crime. He regrets that he did not take out the criminal himself and some unknown hero is now getting rid of the evil in the city. The detective offers his wife to try to fix things up, but she has long been asleep, drunk to the point of unconsciousness. Quentin wakes up in the middle of the night. The guy's hearing is heightened and now he is annoyed by all the sounds that fill his house. He locks his pet in the bathroom with frustration because he is licking his paws loudly. In the morning after a sleepless night, the guy decides to reread the Spider-Man comics to figure out how to be a superhero. The first thing Quentin does is admire his sprawling tattoo and his new toned body. Then, like his idol, he installs a surveillance camera in the hallway. He also hangs a hammock in his room to replace his spider-webbed bed. Thanks to the outdoor video surveillance, Quentin spots Stephanie in the hallway carrying boxes. He immediately walks out into the hallway, worried that the girl has decided to move out after the attack. Stephanie wants to take some unnecessary things to the basement and he asks to accompany her. Outside. They are once again harassed by the local hooligans, but this time Quentin skillfully fights them off. Stephanie is fascinated by the boy's actions, and she becomes even more sympathetic to her neighbor. Quentin wants to confess his feelings to her, but accidentally drops her box of things. It turns out that Stephanie also loves superhero comics and she and Quentin have a lot more in common than he thought. After a romantic moment together, the lad goes to sleep with a smile on his face. The next day, 
Quentin arrives at Han's store in his new persona. His attention is drawn to the black and white film Earth vs. the Spider, where a giant spider attacks defenseless people in a car. Han notices that spiders prey on their victims, so he likes to see them tremble in fear after being trapped. The girl in the movie could have just pretended to be lifeless so that the monster would lose all interest in her. Quentin tells a friend that he has developed superpowers, but Han doesn't believe it. He asks Quentin to pay for the collectible action figure of the superhero spider, but his friend gets cocky and just takes the toy for himself. At home, Quentin has hallucinations and is sickened by the food. The guy wakes up in the middle of the night literally hanging. He, like the real Spider-Man, starts shooting spider webs from his chest. He decides to test his new abilities and covers various things in the apartment with his web. The guy doesn't stop there, and decides to immobilize his dog Thor with the viscous threads. Quentin apologizes to the terrified pet, but a terrible feeling of hunger overwhelms him at the sight of the trapped dog. Realizing that he could hurt Thor, the young man runs out of the house in terror. He runs through the streets in a delirious state, but his hunger only grows stronger. Finally, he arrives at a convenience store, where he sees that the clerk has been attacked by an unknown assailant. Eager to punish the criminal, he knocks him over onto the liquor shelves with incredible force. The salesgirl runs over to the villain's lifeless body, choking back tears. It turns out that she is the offender's girlfriend and is going to report Quentin to the police instead of thanking him. Tired of her screams, the newfound Spider-Man shoots a web and immobilizes the girl. Quentin's body continues to mutate and he is horrified to discover that his arm is turning into a claw. Officer Williams bursts into the store and Quentin hides from him among the boxes. After finding the shop girl in the back, the policeman tries to find out from her what happened. Quentin can no longer restrain himself and attacks the policeman and drags him away. In the morning, Stephanie notices Thor outside her door. A note from Quentin is attached to his collar, asking his neighbor to temporarily take care of his pet. The worried girl tries to reach out to Quentin, but no one answers her. The exhausted young man lies on the bed and watches his beloved on the security camera. He wishes he could tell her about his condition, but worries that the girl will be frightened of the monster he is turning into. At the same time, something is actively being digested in the guy's swollen stomach. At the scene of the crime, they find the stiffened body of the salesgirl's boyfriend. He looks as if he had his life sucked out of him. Jack Grillo and the investigative team look around the store and find the remains of stiff spider webs on the walls. The observant detective notices drops of red liquid on the steps and a name tag of the missing officer Williams. The salesgirl who survived assures the cops that they were attacked by a guy with a claw instead of a hand. Quentin awakens again in the middle of the night with a sharp pain in his gums. He examines his mouth in the mirror, from which a spider sting is slowly coming out. Quentin is startled by the new transformation and screams in terror. At his screams, Stephanie rushes in and insists that the boy open the door for her. A touching conversation takes place between them. Quentin asks the girl if she would agree to go on a date with him. A confused Stephanie confesses that she has wanted to go on a date with him for a long time and has been waiting for her neighbor to ask her out. She asks Quentin to have a romantic evening right now, but the boy painfully says it's too late and chases the girl away. He can't admit to her that he's turning into a monster and the process is unstoppable. Nevertheless, in the morning Quentin wakes up in his usual state. He has hoped that he can control his superpowers and transformation into a spider. But by evening, the guy becomes hungry again and trashes the whole apartment looking for food. Stephanie hears her neighbor screaming and thrashing through the wall, but doesn't know how to help him. Soon Quentin finds a way to satisfy his hunger. The guy lures the hooligans into the basement of the house and eats them for dinner. Jack Grillo's wife is sad about her missing lover. She throws herself at her husband's feet and begs him to find Officer Williams. The woman is convinced that the detective knows her lover's whereabouts and is deliberately hiding him from everyone. The frustrated Grillo leaves his unfaithful wife, and she throws a glass in his wake. The detective arrives at Quentin's house and finds a huge web on the railing near the basement. He takes samples for analysis and takes them to the chemistry lab where Quentin worked. The experienced detective Grillo is disturbed by the fact that the lab's management keeps the research being done there a closely guarded secret. Under the threat of a search warrant, he forces the head of the lab to tell him the whole truth. The man admits that the scientists are experimenting on spiders, examining their ability to regenerate and their irrepressible desire to wipe out as much prey as possible. However, they have never yet injected the spider substance into humans and cannot say what consequences it may lead to. Stephanie tries unsuccessfully to find out what is happening to Quentin. The guy is in a terrible state and is having a hard time containing his further transformations. After waiting for the girl to leave, he goes out and breaks into Han's store. To suppress his instincts, Quentin asks his friend not to move. He gives Han his money back for the action figure and asks his friend to remind him of the weakness of his favorite superhero. 
Han says that the Avengers spider has a human heart. If it stops beating, the superhero will also leave this world. Upon receiving the information, Quentin walks away, suppressing the compulsion to eat his friend. Detective Jack Grillo is sitting in the bar, depressed about his failures at work and his breakup with his wife. After drowning his sorrow in alcohol, he decides to continue his investigation and goes to Quentin's home again. By now the boy has almost completely turned into a monster. Without waiting for an answer from Quentin, he goes back to his car. Grillo suspects that there may be human DNA in the web samples, but his colleagues refuse to take it for analysis. One of the police officers warns the detective that they want him off the case. Throughout the entire time, Grillo is followed by his wife, hoping that he will lead her to Officer Williams. The detective decides to trust his professional instincts and enters the basement of Quentin's house. Inside, he discovers a horrifying picture. The room is filled with spider web cocoons with human victims. One of the victims keeps moving and it turns out that the culprit has left Officer Williams alive. Grillo tries to get the cop out of his confinement, but at that moment his wife bursts into the basement and the detective is distracted by her. Williams decides to shoot himself in the head. Mrs. Grillo is dragged away by Quentin. The detective drives the assailant away, but it is too late, his wife passes away. Meanwhile, Stephanie returns home and notices that the window on the second floor has been broken. The girl notices Quentin's silhouette across the hall. The guy has lost control of himself and has turned into an ugly mutant with six paws sticking out from behind his back. He attacks Stephanie and drags her after him. Grillo hears a noise upstairs and rushes to help, but Quentin has already escaped with his victim. Following the spider web, the detective arrives at an abandoned building. There, the terrified Stephanie is pinned to a huge spider web. By this point, Quentin has completely taken the form of a spider, but has managed to retain some of his sanity. He asks the detective to shoot him in the heart in order to stop him and save the girl. Detective Grillo falls back into a stupor and hesitates to shoot the monster. Stephanie also begs the guy to come to his senses and believes it's not too late to fix everything. Quentin knows, however, that he can no longer be helped. He jumps in Stephanie's direction, provoking Grillo to fire several shots. One of the bullets hits the monster right in the heart and he freezes a few inches away from Stephanie. The girl thanks the good guy within him for saving her from his new disfigured and uncontrollable form. As the story ends, Han talks about the new comic book special about Quentin the superhero who was a friend of his.